one of our all-time favorite guests, a, a guy I used to do radio with, and uh, we, we, we had a blast. I'm talking about Mike Leach, the head coach at Mississippi State. You, you miss doing that? You were really uh, good. Yeah, I do kind of. It was, it was awesome. And then um, <clears throat> and I was in great shape because during the breaks, I'd do prison exercises <laughs> like push-ups and sit-ups. <laughs> of course, the producers hated that. They did. came back out, uh, out of breath. You can't do it. Well, I'd do it anyway. And then... Um, <clears throat> Uh, no, it was awesome, and then uh, uh, you know, hanging out, uh, hanging out on my uh, lawn chair and talking to the radio. Yeah, that was my biggest disappointment. I never got to uh, <coughs> come down. I mean, I've been there, but uh, never got to come down and hang out with you in, in the Keys. That would have been a, a bucket list. Oh, you should have done that. And then, um, and then, uh, well, and of course, your listeners would have hated that because it. Would, wouldn't have had a lot to do with Auburn and Alabama, but um, <laughs> nevertheless, we would have had a good time. I, I caught a little bit of your uh, opening today, and you, I just get the impression, and I, I would never want to put words in your mouth that, that I don't, I wouldn't, I don't want, I won't, I won't put words in your mouth, but you seem like you, you're looking for something else when you come here than a lot of boilerplate pablum. What, what do you look forward to, and, and what, do you, what do you hope to accomplish other than the fact that you're told to be here? Well, I, th I, I would put quite a large emphasis on that told to be here part. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, they, they people ask questions and, of course, uh, the opportunity to share <clears throat> college football. And I think college football would not be near as much fun without, uh, you know, the personalities of the teams, the players, sure. the coaches and all that. So I think, uh, you know, you just try to answer stuff in a genuine fashion and then uh, then there's less to keep track of, and um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not looking for anything. I'm more of a counterpuncher than you, I, I don't come here with a specific message. I hope to deliver. But yeah, you know, when you were doing this from a media standpoint, uh, as all media people, you're looking for a compelling a compelling storyline, and it just seemed to me. And I had a coach tell me this yesterday. Uh, that the first time he came here, he was just trying not to screw up. Uh, and it's almost, I don't know if the PR people, but it just seems like it's drilled into coaches' heads. Don't say anything that goes viral. Well, there's a little bit of don't screw up because, you know, I mean, um, you know, we're kind of uh, in an era of ambush, you know. Nobody knows that better than you. You've had to think about that a lot. I mean, it, 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 I mean, you know, there's a lot of folks out there trying to ambush and uh, and cancel somebody, which, of course, that's absurd. I mean, you want to make everybody as boring as possible, go ahead and start canceling everybody. So, and then, um, uh, <clears throat> but, yeah, I mean, I think you got to avoid that. But then I think there's a, also a point to, um, where you have to react against it by, uh, you know, being willing to express yourself and, and being willing to be wrong and being willing to uh, uh, live with the fact that uh, somebody else might get upset because I do think they have a responsibility uh, to not whine about everything all the time, you know. But it, it, uh, there, today uh, we heard from Nick Saban, we've heard from other coaches on, on this NIL issue and every, everyone complains and everyone says what we need to do, but nobody seems to be doing anything. Oh, I know. We're going to have to solve that ourselves, in my opinion. You know, college and uh, conferences and things. We need to solve that ourselves. I mean, you know, and uh, <clears throat> I've never bought the notion that Congress is going to be very helpful. I mean, um, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, first of all, we know more about the problem than they do. Uh, <clears throat> second of all, we know more how we, uh, how we got there than they do. Uh, third of all, uh, just for fun, because uh, you like fun questions on your show. Um, tell me three things Congress has accomplished in the last five years. Well, the, the thing they mainly do in times of crisis. That's not an accomplishment. The, no, no, I can't answer the question. I, I was just there the other day uh, at the Senate, and they are simply used for emergency funds. That, and that's not an accomplishment, but it's a reaction. Right. And uh, so they, it, they don't do anything what, proactively. Which brings us right back to college football needs to be solved by college football. And then 
<clears throat> you know, thinking about it for three days, I mean, I came up with a solution, which I think really needs to be polished and all that probably. But you know, I mean, it all, I mean, it starts with defining, you know, what's a, what is a professional college football player and what is an amateur football player. And I think there's space for both. And I think that, um, you know, the notion of, uh, that we're not even gonna define this thing and all of a sudden, you know, <clears throat> a 17, 18 year old uh, uh, athlete uh, now has uh, more professional privileges than any professionals in the history of the world. Well, that of course is absurd. And, um, you know, there's a point where I think, uh, you know, everybody gets in a room and it's kind of like being married to your sister. Pretty soon everybody comes out the same. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.